Hi, my name is Linda Dahl, and I'm the president of the National Watercolor Society. I'm here today to explain to artists how to use Photoshop elements to help them prepare their painting images for competition. Notes and screenshots of this lecture can be downloaded free on the National Watercolor Society webpage, www.nationalwatercolorsociety.org, under the tab Digital Image Preparation Instructions. Any new digital camera or fairly new digital camera will work. Um, the higher the megapixel rating, the larger the photo you can print. But for most shows, uh, the requirement is only 300 dpi, with the longest side of the image being between 1200 and 1500 pixels. I will explain more about that in a moment. I like my image quality to be set to best or largest on my camera, and then I have plenty of pixels to work with. I turn the flash off. I use the auto setting or set it to sunny exposure. I prefer to photograph my paintings in full sun around noon. We are going to be using Photoshop Elements uh, to work with today, and each version of Photoshop Elements is slightly different. The illustrations shown and the directions given are for Elements 11 for Mac. They should be somewhat similar to other versions you may have. You can either double click on your icon or on Mac. I can go to my toolbar and click on the Photoshop Elements icon. It will then open the program, which is actually two separate programs in one. The organizer is one program. The photo editor is another. We are going to be working in photo editor, so I will click on the photo editor to have it open the editor. And notice up here it says Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor. That's what we want to work in. In this, there are three different modes. There is quick, there is guided, and there is expert. We want to click the expert, and we want to work in expert mode. The next thing we need to do is to open a photograph, and we are going to go File, we are going to go Open, and it's going to open a browser window, and here's my computer, here's my all my files, here's my desktop, here's my movies, my pictures, my documents. Wherever you store your pictures is where you want to go at this point to look for your picture. Mine happen to be on the desktop in a folder called Digital Class, in a folder called Photos for Students, and the painting is Painting to be Done. And I am going to click, and then I am going to click the Open, and the photograph is going to open. I am then going to turn on the grid, because I want this to be perfectly straight, and there's no way for me to know if it's straight if I don't have a grid. So I am going to go View, and I am actually going to click on the word grid, and it will put a grid on my photograph. Um, if you don't like how many boxes, or they're too light or too dark, you can go to o Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor, and you can go to Preferences, and go to Guides and Grid, and you can actually change the size, you can actually change the divisions, um, you can change uh, how many inches they're apart. So if I put two, can you see how these just opened up to be a much bigger grid? And when I put one, it's a smaller grid. I like one and two, but you can use whatever you are comfortable with. And when you get it set, go ahead and say OK. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to skew this painting. The juror does not want to see the wall, the frame, the mat. Um, and everything else in the piece. So we are going to go to um, Image Transform Skew. Image Transform Skew. And then it brings us these handles, and it's a much better idea to go in than to go out. Photoshop and Photoshop Elements has a very sophisticated equation that allows it to move pixels with and yet keep the picture very clear. So I'm going to take this handle and I am going to move the one side down until I get it lined up on this line and this line. Can you see that line going through? I am then going to take this corner 
and again I'm going to move it in until I get this lined up on the line of the grid now this looks like it has to come up just a little bit um, and I'm going to do that now if I put my mouse in in the inside of these handles it's going to move the whole picture I need to make sure I get out here on the outside to get this perfectly straight and it looks to me like boy that looks pretty straight that looks pretty straight um, this might need to go up just a hair and that looks pretty straight when I get it to where I think that this is a pretty good rectangle and it's um, pretty straight according to the grid I can either hit the the return button or the enter button or I can just hit this green check mark which is what I'm going to do I now want to take the grid back off I will go view again I will click on the word grid and this time it will disappear I will then go down to this modify box in this toolbox and I will click on the crop tool and I don't have to get this perfect because it will let me it will let me adjust it and I will put my mouse down and drag it from the top left to the bottom right and now I can use these little handles to push it out as far as possible so that I don't cut off any of the painting um, I want the full painting showing and I think that's pretty good again I can hit the return enter button or I can just click on this green box and there we have the painting perfectly um, square ready to go or perfectly rectangled um, ready to go now this is a, a student of mine um, painting and she gave me permission to use it because she was trying to get this ready for show and I helped her and asked her for permission to use it since it was so skewed and it was a good example of how you can take a bad shot and still get a really good image to send to a juror. I happen to have the painting in front of me I would never adjust the levels without having the painting in front of me but I know that the camera can't really read white or black and that the value range in the photograph isn't the full value range of the painting and so I am actually going to go into image rather I'm sorry I'm going to go into enhance adjust lighting and I'm going to go to levels and it's going to bring me up a histogram of this image and this is you can see everything's in the dark range there's absolutely nothing down in the light range so with the painting in front of me I'm going to watch the painting as I adjust these levels and this is about how light this area is um, and I also look and the darks are a lot darker in the actual painting this is much closer this is a water media painting it's acrylic on paper and this is really beautiful bright color and much better than it was in the actual in the photograph that we took so at this point the photo matches the painting much much closer you'll notice that there are eyedroppers on the right side if my painting had lots of real whites and lots of real blacks I would click the white um, or the empty eyedropper and I would click it into the white area and I would take the black and click it into the black area and it would set the value range and maybe get it closer but for a painting like this with no whites and no blacks I'm much better off moving these um, slider bars uh, until the painting until when I look at the painting and I look at the photograph they both match beautifully and then I'm going to say okay um, at this point I would actually say save save as because I would want to save it as a TIFF and I would want to save it um, the way I, I, I might want it so this one I usually have a code number on my paintings so if I were saving this it probably would be something like 1409 um, which would be the ninth painting in 2014 and then it would probably be um, sunset or whatever the name happened to be and I'm actually going to save that right on my desktop so that I know where it is while I'm working I will 
eventually move it into the paintings folder, but for right now, I want to save it there. And I want to, I, I always want the IBM, not the Macintosh, even though I'm working on a Mac. Um, PCs cannot open it if I click Macintosh, but if I click IBM, both PC and Macintosh can open it. Um, so I just want no compression and I want everything the way it is. This is the one that's really important. And even when you're on a Macintosh, you want to make sure the IBM PC a button is clicked so that the juror can always open the images. And then I'm going to say OK and OK. Um, now I want to get the image ready for show. Um, and so I am going to go image resize image size. And notice that this camera took this at a 72 resolution and it 19.5. Uh, times 27.7. .7. So that is not what we need for this show at all. So I am going to change this to a 300. Notice that it's going to change from 8 megapixels to 140. I certainly don't want that. So I'm going to go down here and click this resample box off and then click it back on. And it tells me that if we redistribute the pixels, the 8 megapixel to 8 megapixel, and we changed the resolution to 300 instead of 72 dpi, that the largest I can print this picture perfect is 6.6 .6 times 4 by 7. But we happen to know for the NWS show that we want 300, but we really want anywhere between 1200 and 1500. I'm actually going to put 1500 in here. Notice that it takes it from an 8 megapixel down to a 4.55 megapixel. And when I save it as a JPEG, it's going to compress it down to about 1.5 megapixels. And that's exactly what most shows want you to submit so that it can go email, it can get uploaded easily. So notice that the instructions on your perspective might have said resolution 300, that's 300 pixels per inch, and that the largest number, the largest side needs to be 1500. We don't care what this is. I always have um, this uh, check so that I'm always in proportion. And that's, I'm going to say, okay, it will shrink it just a little bit. And now I'm going to say file, save as, and now instead of saving as a TIFF, I'm going to save as a JPEG. And instead of saving as the number that I had for my original picture, um, what the NWS show is asking for is your last name, a dash, and for the member show, M14, meaning member, sh member show 2014, I'm again going to save it to my desktop so it's handy and I have it ready to go. And I'm going to say save. And in this case, there was one on my desktop. I'm going to say replace. And I'm going to say OK. We now have a really good image that is ready to be submitted to the NWS member show. Um, we have skewed it. We have cropped it. We have resized it. We have adjusted the levels. And we have saved it to the specifications for the show we are entering. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, and we hope you'll be entering our upcoming NWS exhibition. Thank you.